No return of the Soviet Union. But with each barbaric attack on Ukraine, Russia loses not only millions of dollars in bombs and rockets, but also lost allies. And on the other hand, instead of the mythical Western enemy, Kremlin receives the real one. Russia's war against Ukraine is posing the biggest threat to Euro-Atlantic security in decades. NATO to boost troops on high alert to over 300,000. These are the main thesis of the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg ahead of the summit in Madrid. The threat is real and the Russian occupiers are inadequate, murdering civilians in Ukraine and at the same time threatening to all the neighbors they have. Obviously, Russia's borders are too close to the civilized world. The one who noticed that is the president of Kazakhstan, Kasim Jomar Tokayev. He refused not only to recognize the legitimacy of the territories on Donbass occupied by Russians, but also refused to support the war against Ukraine. And he did it on the same stage with the Russian dictator. He couldn't help visiting that event. One month before the full-scale invasion, there were riots in Kazakhstan provoked by the lack of reforms and rise of the prices. People went on the streets and Tokayev asked the local collective security treaty organization for help. Mostly Russians are there. The situation reminded the Maidan in Ukraine in 2014, when former President Yanukovych ran to Russia and Russia annexed Crimea and part of Donbass. But in Kazakhstan, the so-called peacekeepers suppressed the uprising much faster, many people died and it was over. One can easily imagine the Kazakhs' attitude to Russia, so turning his back to Putin was also the only chance for Tokayev to stay in power. No one wants to be a new Yanukovych. Now they are preparing a referendum and reforms in Kazakhstan, and it's obviously not a supporting neighbor for Russia. After the collapse of the USSR and the annexation of Transnistria 30 years ago, Moldova for decades had mostly pro-Russian authorities. Now the country has modern pro-European leader Maya Sandu, and the dangerous relations with Russia suddenly started coming to an end. With their own reforms and way to the EU, Moldova also suffered from Russian intervention when the Kremlin tried to organize pro-Russian protests in the country several days ago. Though it's senseless to do that when the whole world understands how dangerous anything pro-Russian can be. Lithuania, that borders the Kaliningrad region, is one of the three Baltic countries who never wanted to be the part of the Soviet mad dog state. Now, with the sanctions slowly getting bigger and broader, Lithuania blocked the transit of some categories of goods. And at the same moment, the Kremlin exploded, for now only with threatening statements. The citizens of Kaliningrad themselves don't see a problem here. They plan their future, visit restaurants and do what they call analyzing geopolitics. Russian bots provide hundreds of cyber attacks on Lithuanian sites. Nearby, Russia holds urgent military exercises to show how dangerous their army is. But the world already knows that famous toilet army with bombs and rockets. Trying to confront the unity of the world, Russia tries to gather other countries and organizations. Thrown away from the civilized communities, Putin nevertheless is planning to visit the G20 summit. That means he is so optimistic that even has plans at least until November. After the presence of the Taliban on the St. Petersburg Economic Forum, Iran and Argentina submitted the applicators to join BRICS. The consolidation of the five major emerging economies started 15 years ago by Russia. But there is only one problem. In the nearest perspective, there will be four major economies. And with the status of terrorist state coming closer, it's unclear if anyone in BICS would wish to deal with Russia.